Ancient Greeks were very advanced in plane geometry, and apart from Euclid and Pythagoras, Heron is probably the most heard of, known for his formula for calculating the area of triangles. Square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, where s is half the perimeter of a triangle, and a, b, c denote the three side lengths. You might be surprised that I said plane geometry when introducing Heron's formula, because it is usually put in a trigonometry section of a textbook. This is only because it is most easily justified using trigonometry, but Heron originally used plane geometry. Today we are going to look at four different proofs in detail and see which of those is your favorite. The first proof is the most seen, because it is probably also used in textbooks. Area of a triangle is half base times height. We can let this side with length a to be the base, and the height can then be represented as b times sine c, and so the area is half a b sine c, which is the first result we need for this proof. Next, we have cosine law. If you want a proof of the cosine law, stick to the end of the video because I don't want to interrupt the flow and sidetrack too much. Then we have one final identity. The sum of sine squared and cosine squared of any angle is 1. Now armed with these three facts, we are ready to turn on the algebra machine. So this could be done with cosine law. Another proof only relies on Pythagoras' theorem. Consider this triangle, where we split the segment of length a into two parts by the height. Based on Pythagoras' theorem, we have these two relations. Subtract the second equation from the first, we have this equation, which can be rearranged as follows. Now the area is actually half a times h. So we get this formula. And the algebra from now on would be very similar to what we have done above. So I don't bore you with it. These two proofs rely very heavily on algebra, so are there any other ways to prove Heron's formula without these heavy machinery? These two methods presented below would be more heavily reliant on geometry instead. These two proofs both in turn rely on these two results. First, we have a novel way to calculate the area of a triangle using this diagram where I here is the in-center of the large triangle. To save space, we use the notation that S with the subscript XYZ meaning the area of the triangle stated. Then we have the large triangle being the three smaller triangles combined. And we can apply half base times height to each of the smaller triangles, and get that the area can also be calculated by the product of R, the in-radius, and s, the semi-perimeter. Another result we need is the geometric meaning of s minus a, s minus b, and s minus c. In this diagram, line segments with the same color are of the same length. If you really want, here is a simple justification. Pause the video if you want. From the diagram, it is now easy to see that on the perimeter, 
red, green, and blue segments have appeared twice, so they add up to the perimeter, and then divide by two. Now, if we concentrate on side AB, we have red and green segments adding up to C, and so the blue segment has the length S minus C. Similarly, the red segment has length S minus A, while the green one has length S minus B. A good mnemonic is that the segments from A would have length S minus A, from B would have length S minus B, and from C would have length S minus C. Before we start with Heron's original proof, here is just two more results specific to this third proof, where the proof of these results will be at the last part of the video. If any quadrilateral fulfills either of the criteria, it can be inscribed in the circle, that is, cyclic. Conversely, if any quadrilateral is cyclic, it must have these two properties. We name these two results A and B respectively for future reference. Now, we are ready for the proof. First off, we have this colorful diagram, where the angles at the center are of the same size if they are colored the same, which can also be easily justified using congruent triangles shown previously. So now, considering the angles around the point I, we have two angles of each color, and so red, green, and blue angles add up to 180 degrees. We now associate the red angle to be the angle AIE, and the combined green and blue angles to be angle BIC. Then we can conclude that these two angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, now we deliberately create a cyclic quadrilateral by constructing these perpendicular lines which intersect at H and then denote the intersection of IH and BC to be G. Then the quadrilateral ICHB would be cyclic, because the two purple angles are the same, and we have property A. Now since it is cyclic, these two opposite angles would add up to 180 degrees due to property B. From what we have discussed, the yellow and red angles in the middle add up to 180 degrees, so the two red angles are of the same size. Combining with the two right angles, we can conclude that these two grey triangles are similar. There are just two more pairs of similar triangles, which are easy to identify. Firstly, in addition to the right angles, we also have these two vertically opposite angles so it is enough to prove the similarity. These two are also similar, because the yellow and red angles add up to angle BIG, which is by construction 90 degrees. And similarly, in a triangle, the yellow and red angles also add up to 90 degrees, so the two red angles are of the same size. With the right angle, we can also prove the similarity of these two triangles. It might be a lot to take in, so let me summarize what just happened. We managed to arrive at the conclusion that the area is the product of R and S, as well as the side lengths expressed in terms of S, A, B, and C. Then we prove three pairs of similar triangles. If you don't understand how we came up with these, first think over it by yourself, because I assure you that you will gain a much deeper understanding by thinking through this. However, if you have absolutely no idea, then of course you should replay what we have done, and pause where necessary. We now move on. From this pair of similar triangles, we have this proportionality of sides. Now since both ID and IE are the radius of the circle, they are of the same length, so we can replace ID by IE. Now we look at another pair of similar triangles. We have another proportion of sides. We can now replace BC by the symbol A, and from the results we obtained, we have AE 
to be s minus a. Now we add 1 to both sides, and we write 1 in different forms. Now the sum of GD and CG is from the diagram CD, and from the results previously obtained, it is actually S minus B. Now focus on the right side, which is S over S minus A. Rearranging, we have this formula. We are quite close now. From this pair of similar triangles, we have this proportion of sides. Since ID is the in radius, we replace ID by R, and from the previous results, we have BD to be S minus B. Rearranging, we get this formula. Combining with the result derived a minute ago, we first multiply both formula. Cancel GD on both sides, then multiply both sides by S. Then square root both sides. Since the area is R times S, we finally have the Heron's formula. Now given how complicated this proof is, we really need to give a round of applause to Heron to come up with the entire proof. But now, we have much less complicated geometric proof after so many years. We would still use these two results. First, we construct external angle bisectors of B and C, which will intersect at the point which we call IA. Since angle bisectors are the collections of points that are equidistant from the two lines that create the angle, which can be proved pretty easily, that means IA is equidistant from BF, BC, and CD, and so also lie on the angle bisector of A. And of course, because of the equal distance, we can draw a circle just touching the sides. Since we have previously demonstrated that the tangential segments from a point are of the same length, we have the pairs of blue and purple segments having the same length. And so they add up to length BC. At the same time, we have AF equal to AD, and so we have this relation. Rearranging, we get the difference between these lengths. By subtracting the second relation from the first, we have this. What's interesting is that we of course have AD as the sum of these two lengths, which can be found to be S, so we give S its geometric meaning. Now we have this pair of triangles to be similar, which is pretty evident from the green common angle and the right angles. So we have this proportion of sides. Since we have the previous result, we turn AE to S minus A, and then we have this formula. For this pair of triangles, we observe that around vertex C, red and yellow angles appear twice, adding up to 180 degrees, so these two angles add up to 90 degrees. At the same time, these two angles add up to 90 degrees because of how angles sum up in a triangle. Combining with the two right angles, we can prove the similarity of the two triangles. Now we write down the proportionality of the sides, and use the results we have before, and we have this relation. Multiplying these two results we just concluded using similar triangles, then divide both sides by IAD, then multiply both sides by S, and again, observe that the area is actually the square root of the right-hand side, and so we have again proved the Heron's formula. I promised you guys that I will provide the proof of cosine law, cyclic quadrilateral properties A and B here, and so I made a separate video about it. Check that out if you are unsure how to derive those. For now, subscribe if you want more of these math videos and see you next time.